So I've been wanting to do a video of this route for a while. And uh, well, let me show you why. Thanks, Paige. Yeah, no worries. So we just got dropped off here at the Rubble Creek Trailhead by our friend Paige, and we're just entering Garibaldi Provincial Park. And this is our last big long run before we taper for our goal race. We're both running the Quebec Mega Trail 100 miler in three weeks. And we thought we'd finish our training off on a high note by running one of the most epic and scenic routes in the area. So we've got a lot of work ahead of us today with close to 70 kilometers and 3,800 meters of climbing. And it's probably going to take us somewhere around 12 to 13 hours, depending on how much time we spend taking photos and shooting video. So we better get started. Great. Let's do it. Starting from Rubble Creek Trailhead, our route would take us up past Garibaldi Lake, out and back to Panorama Ridge, before dropping down Helm Creek to Chequemus Lake. After a short section of gravel road, we'd climb to the summit of Whistler Mountain. We then drop back down to High Note Trail along the musical bumps and all the way down Singing Pass to Whistler Village where we left our car. We're about an hour in, 5k down, making quick work of this first climb. It's really busy this morning. Which is be, to be expected for Saturday morning in the middle of July. But that's okay, we think once we're past Panorama Ridge, probably be away from the crowds. And uh, the plan is to go slow and steady, eat lots, stay hydrated, and uh, hopefully really showcase the beauty of this route because it's really fantastic. Can't wait to show you guys. So up here is the barrier, and this is pretty much the only thing holding back Garibaldi Lake from draining all the way down this valley and basically into Squamish. And apparently there used to be a little village down here in the valley at the bottom, but they had to relocate all the residents in, I think, 1981, because uh, they deemed this barrier unsafe and unstable. And in fact, they say that if this was to let go, it would cause tons of devastation down in Squamish, and it would likely create a tidal wave that would reach Vancouver Island. So Garibaldi is a provincial park and they do a really good job with these trails. You know, you don't get a lot of double track or crushed gravel or that kind of thing. Just really nice flowy runnable single track. Hi there. Oh, hi. Beautiful, eh? Yeah. Gorgeous. So that is the black tusk up there.
We're going up there, Panorama Ridge. We're gonna get a great view looking down on Garibaldi Lake here. up the final stretch here to Panorama Ridge. We're just about three hours into our run. Feeling good so far and uh, I was just thinking the last time we were here with Matt, Alexa and Carl, we were about 10 hours into a very long day. So this is quite nice this time to have somewhat fresh legs and uh, there's a very nice cool breeze here, which is quite enjoyable. Hi. So down below us here we have Garibaldi Lake and you can see we're just surrounded by glaciated peaks all around us here. And behind us over here you can see the Black Tusk, one of the most iconic peaks in the area. You can see it from all over and it's thought to actually be the remnants of an extinct volcano. It's actually the lava core from a stratovolcano and the rest of it's eroded away leaving just that, that lava core. And you can actually scramble up to the top of it there. We've only done it once and we didn't have great weather unfortunately. but that's a really cool day out as well.
So we're almost down off the ridge here and we're gonna head down into this area called the Cinder Flats. And we're gonna cruise along this flat stretch and drop down Helm Creek down to Chequemus Lake. with Jeff Peltier. Every day shuffling. <laughs> this is my uh, 200 mile pace. Yeah. Oh, these trails are so nice and buffed out. Apparently I was kicking up too much dust. So we just finished the very nice descent along Helm Creek and we are now back down on Chequemus Trail before starting the big climb on the mountain bike trails all the way up to top of Whistler. And so far so good. We're just uh, finishing up our sandwiches that have been sitting warming up in our backpacks for a few hours now. Yeah, we've covered just about 30K now, 1600 meters of climbing and we're at five hours and 32 minutes elapsed so yeah so far so good so like Audrey said we're just finishing our sandwiches here and of course we brought a bunch of run food as well I think we brought about 1600 calories each we figure in my case a combination of blocks gels bars I've got some trail mix with some pretzels so yeah about 1600 calories plus the sandwich which I know that must be four or five hundred calories so not quite the 250 calories per hour that I would normally bring but this is kind of like a 100 mile effort, which is appropriate because we're training for a 100 mile race in a few weeks. So we're not burning as many calories as we would at say a 50K or 100K type of effort. Any of you who have seen my video about what I eat when I train and race will know that I usually aim for about 250 calories per hour. But especially on these really long runs, I think as long as you have some, some good solid food to help satiate your hunger, 
with a mix of run food just to help to keep you moving when you are running faster, uh, and then some salt tablets to balance out your water intake, then I think you'll be doing pretty well. Hey, bear. We just made it to the Chequemus Trailhead parking lot. We've got a few kilometers of road now to run. Totally exposed, full of dust, I'm sure, from cars. And then we'll be hitting the mountain bike trails to climb up to Whistler. And all we have to do is climb the entire Whistler mountain to the peak. No problem. I think our last water stop is right up here as well. Yeah. So we're going to fill up because this actually might be the last water we see until we summit Whistler. Hot. Yeah, this is the part that sucks. <sighs> How apropos. <laughs> okay, so that road section wasn't too bad. I think it was about three kilometers. And from here, we have something like 1600 meters of climbing to the top of Whistler Peak. A lot of this is gonna be exposed. We'll get some cover under the canopy, especially as we get higher. But as I like to say, it's time to put our heads down and get to work. Look, it's a mountain. Don't look up. It's really hot in here. Yeah, it's like a sauna. This wood feature has seen better days. difficult climb I'm not gonna lie and we're over seven hours into our day at this point so definitely starting to feel it and it's hot we're thirsty but the spirits are good we thought it like we might have to look out for mountain bikers but we haven't seen anyone and I think this trail really doesn't see a little, whole lot of action because it's overgrown a little rough shape and nothing but spiderwebs. <laughs> but for now, 
trail to ourselves. So many bug bites. <sighs> well, ourselves and all the mosquitoes, of course. Mess and that loose sand, I'd rather use the roots. Yeah, let's just veggie belay it. I'm looking out really far. I felt the tingle on my heart. For the bikes, I like that shit. Would you drop down that? Tell me in the comments below. No, I'm just kidding. Back into the meadows, getting into the subalpine here. And we're almost done climbing. We managed to find a very small spring. It wasn't great. We pulled a little bit of water. It's cold. It was cold. But we're looking forward to rehydrating at the next stream. The bugs have been pretty horrendous this whole climb. I'm covered in mosquito bites. Hopefully there'll be a breeze at the top too, so maybe there won't be as many bugs. There's the summit. It's a little bit further to climb. That's so close. So close. You can see it at least. And it's windy up here. Oh, it is windy up here. The bugs are gone. That's where we came from, over there. <laughs> so crazy. Does that look so far? <laughs> that is so far. I can't believe we came from there. But on to our next objective. tough climb. I've been out of water for a while. That was just a tough climb. Is this thing on? We're trying to snowboard every month of the year and uh, it's July, almost the end of it, and I guess I gotta do a backflip just like every other month. So we're on top of Whistler, you're gonna camp out here and what, yeah. find a... Find a patch of snow. Make a, make a lump and then throw some salt on it so it gets nice and firm and almost as dumb as trail running 72 kilometers. <laughs> you won't catch me doing that. So you can see Whistler Village below. There's this cool new walkway they built but it looks like it's closed unfortunately. It's pretty tempting to take that lift back down to our car but uh, you know we've still got a bit of work to do here. So we just dropped off the summit. Um, we're back down now on High Note Trail. And High Note Trail is gonna skirt below the mountain here. We're gonna traverse all the way around into Whistler backcountry. Um, fortunately, there's a water source up here, a really reliable one that we're gonna hit in just a couple minutes. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty dehydrated. Normally, climbing out of the valley, we would have hit this waterfall first, but we wanted to go to the summit of Whistler. Um, but we kind of expected there to be some snow melt, at least on the way to the summit, or possibly even some water available on the summit. So it's really strange. I guess it's all melted in the last couple of weeks uh, since we got some data from friends. Um, it's okay, we knew this water supply, this water source was here. 
It just meant that we went a little bit longer without water, sort of an extra hour or so. You know, we weren't in danger. It was just really uncomfortable, really dry. And uh, you know how it is when you're just thirsty, you get a little bit kind of miserable. So, so we're gonna sit here, take our time, rehydrate, take some salt pills to go with it, just sort of recharge. Butterflies. Here's our first view of Chekmis Lake. Beautiful out here. Wow. There's our last climb right up ahead there. It was just a little one. Just a little guy. So we're coming up on our last climb here, and then it's all downhill. I think it's about 12K down Singing Pass back to Whistler Village. 
And you know, today was a tough day. We had a lot of climbing today. We had a lot of distance to cover. I know sometimes in my films, I might make it look easier than it is. And that's partly because of, well, not only what I, what I film, but also what I include in the edits and really actually what I exclude both in filming and editing. But really this run was the accumulation of about 16 weeks of pretty intense training, a lot of hard work. Audra and I both have been going to the gym twice a week, working with a personal trainer. We've worked with RMTs and physios. We've had our share of setbacks and minor injuries. We do back-to-back -back long runs on the weekend. We do midweek hill workouts. You know, we're running upwards of 100, um, maybe even 120 kilometers per week with thousands of meters of climbing. But even today, there were definitely moments of discomfort, kind of borderline suffering. That really is what it's all about. It's about getting uncomfortable, suffering, but doing it in beautiful places. And that's kind of the goal for my channel and for my videos as well. I want to encourage people and inspire people to spend more time outside of their comfort zone and to seek adventure and seek beauty in nature and hopefully do it with people that you care about. And let me know in the comments below if this video did inspire you. It really does encourage me to continue doing what I'm doing, which is really trying to share my passion for the outdoors. How do you feel? Good. A little tired? A little tired, a little sore. Pretty happy though. Good. Pretty chatty. Ooh. That was a long descent. Oh, oh look at that, eh? Oh yeah. 